All right, so today we're going to um, continue with our integration and we're going to start to transform from our kind of discrete measurement being those bars and those rectangles and those chunky shapes and we're going to slowly transform it into a more continuous model. Uh, so today what we're going to do is that we're going to talk about uh, our Jorg Friedman, Bernard Riemann. He uh, was alive from 1826 to 1866, and he's the one that published what we call Riemann's sums. Now, Riemann's sums is the act of uh, taking rectangles and putting them under a curve and finding the sum of them. So things like the LRAM, the RRAM, and the MRAM that we've been growing more comfortable with, those are all examples of Riemann's sums. Now, Riemann introduced the concept of approximating the area both above and below a curve. So what Riemann was able to conclude is an image like this. So he had decided that what if he had a curve of above the x-axis, above that horizontal axis? Well, those would all be positive areas. Well, what if we had an area under the horizontal axis? such as this. So Riemann had decided, as logically it would state, that these would all be negative areas. Now, in calculus, we're gonna start to mix two concepts together. One would be asking, what is the total area? Now, the total area would be the evaluation of a definite integral. So we would simply take the positive area and add it with the negative area, and combined, we'd get the total area. So it's possible that if your uh, positive area was more than your negative area, your total area would be positive. If your negative area was bigger than your positive area, then your total area would be negative. So that's kind of what Riemann sums would allow us to figure out. Now, if we were to maybe have this be a model of total distance and we were talking about, um, say a velocity graph or something like that, and we we're finding the area under that curve. Well, now the context has changed because if you remember with the velocity curve, that if you are below the horizontal axis, you're still going somewhere, you're just going in the other direction uh, or in the negative direction. So if the context were to lead us to believe that we are still going somewhere, whether it's positive or negative, then we would want to add the absolute values of those measurements together. So really, uh, this would still be a total distance, as would this, and the sum of them would be the total distance traveled. So we're talking about Riemann sums, we're talking about adding and subtracting positive and negative areas, but again, it's in context of the problem. If they're just asking you to evaluate, then you keep the negative negative, the positive positive, and combine them. But if they are talking about maybe the negative still represent us going somewhere and the positive is going somewhere combined, they give us a larger going somewhere. So just a little disclaimer. Uh, so then what Riemann sums was later uh, evolved into was this symbol here. And I apologize, I have all the labeling, but it is this little elongated S with a number at the bottom, a number at the top, a function with the change or in the respect to a variable. This is all a definite integral. It's called a definite integral because it's definitely starting and it's definitely stopping. The other type of integral would be an indefinite integral, which that means that it doesn't stop. So it's either coming from negative infinity or going to positive infinity or both. So that would be an indefinite integral. This is a definite integral. So we are definitely saying that it's going from A to B. Whatever A and B are, it's going from A and it's stopping at B. Now to just go ahead and to read what I put in here, uh, A is always the lower limit of integration. So if I were to go from, let's say zero to four, zero would go where the A value is. B is the upper limit of integration. So that would be the higher value. And then this elongated S is not actually an S, it is the integral sign. 
The f of x is the function that we are integrating. Uh, so if you think about all the different curves and shapes that we've had, whatever that outside shape is that makes the curve, there is a function that could represent that curve. So the f of x is called our integrand, and that's what would be inside the radical. That would most often be the height of the rectangle. The d of x is, uh, again, this is kind of saying multiplying. So the change in the x would be the width of the rectangle. So you can see on how they were able to move from Riemann sums to this definite integral, because right here is the equation for the area of a rectangle. The change in the base times its height. It's just that what if its height is changing at every point, and how are we going to best approximate this integral? And we would read this entire thing saying the integral from A to B. Now, an example I'd like to go over, I'm gonna go over it two different ways. The first is going to be a way that we're comfortable with using Riemann sums. The second is going to be using the logic of a geometric formula that I may recognize that I can use. And then I'm gonna compare my two others. On your homework tonight, I'm gonna to ask you to do both. Look at the shape, use Riemann sums to approximate the area, and then what shape or shapes would fit under this curve to best approximate it using our geometric uh, knowledge. And so this is the integral of the square root of four minus x squared from negative two to two. So using Riemann sums, I am going to sketch this curve. It is a semicircle from negative two to two. And I chose to do MRAM for each of my four rectangles. Four, just because I felt like it, you could do even more than that. You can see this kind of looks like one, uh, but I chose to do four rectangles. I also was fine with doing four because as soon as I did these first two rectangles, I knew that these two rectangles were gonna have the same value. So it made the math a little quicker. So the width or the dx of this rectangle is one. And then the height, the f of x, the output would be when I plug negative three halves into this function and I got the square root of four minus nine fourths or square root of seven over two. And then I did the same thing over here from zero to negative one, that is a dx, a change in my x values of one. And it has a height of, well, when I plug in negative one half, I got one fourth, combine, simplify, square root of 15 halves. And then these two rectangles were identical. So then when I add them together, root seven divided by two plus root seven divided by two was root seven, root 15 over two plus root 15 over two is root 15 and it equal to about 6.5187. So that is the approximated area under this curve using Riemann sums. Well, what if I recognize a geometric formula? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle would have to be pi r squared over two or half of pi r squared. So I know the radius is two. So I go ahead and plug that in. I get half of, oops, that's a little typo right there. That should be a two. I got ahead of myself. Half of four pi is two pi, two pi is approximately 6.2832. So when comparing these two values, our approximation was a little bit higher, which makes sense because maybe here, 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 and here was a little bit more than there and there. Uh, maybe if we didn't have these two corners sticking out, it would have been even closer, but we did. And so we can see on how close our Riemann sums approximation is to the actual area under the curve. And this is the actual area or the approximation to the area because a semicircle would fit perfectly under the semicircle. So your task with your homework problems tonight will be, all right, what is my approximation with Riemann sums? And then what geometric formula do I know, whether it be a square, rectangle, a semicircle, a triangle, a trapezoid, whatever it may be, how would that fit under my curve? And since that shape would fit perfectly, then we can say that that is all the area under the curve.
My next example is dealing with trigonometry because I wanted some positive and some negative areas in there to give you an example. Uh, so I chose the integral of cosine of x from zero to three pi over two. Now I sketched my curve and I chose to do three rectangles and those three rectangles are all gonna be M rams. Now my picture was obviously a little bit off, but that's okay. And so my first uh, Riemann rectangle that I'm gonna use is going to have the width of pi over two and the height of when I plug in pi over four. So cosine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. So I have my dx, which is pi over two, and I have my f of x, which is root two over two. And then I plug in three pi over two and I get negative root two over two to being the output. Still the width is pi over two. And for my third rectangle, the width is pi over two. And when I plug in five pi over four, I get negative root two over two. And so when I combine these, I go ahead and multiply them out and I am on fire with my basic math skills. And then I get approximately negative pi root two over four. Now, when I take out my calculator and I try that out, I get negative pi root two divided by four, I get negative 1.11. Now I plug this into my calculator, which will, uh, the inspires by the way, will find the exact value of the integral, we'll get there. For those that don't have an inspire, we'll do it a little bit differently. Um, and the actual area under the curve was negative one. So in this case, Riemann sums did a pretty good job. They were only 11 hundredths of a value off from the actual area. Uh, so that in a nutshell is what we're gonna be doing in 5.2. We are going to be connecting the knowledge of Riemann sums to this definite integral. And again, on your homework, I want you to do uh, Riemann sums of as many rectangles as you'd like, and then find some sort of geometric formula that would best fit under your curve, and then just have a comparison of, this is what I got with my approximation, and this is what I got when I had an area that fit exactly underneath. Good luck.